Hey and welcome to Sekiro the Ultimate Guide. Now if this is your first time watching any of these videos then I'd ask for a minute or so of your time just so I can explain how to use this guide and what it's about. Essentially this guide is entirely complete and it will help you get a full platinum for Sekiro. It covers all NPC quests that are relevant, all items, a best path through the game and also specifically strategies to get you through the game with the path of least resistance. Remember that this guide is supposed to be used as a full guide but you, could, you can use it for specific areas if you need to but if you're confused about how you know we are at a certain point or doing a certain thing, chances are the answer is in a previous episode. When it comes to boss battles, we really only show you the easiest method that we could find based on our perspective. If you want to fight the boss differently, it's up to you in this case to find a different and harder strategy. Now, if you have a good tip or have a question, leave them in the comments and I'll add them to a pinned post. That way this guide can constantly get better or more efficient. So if you have a question, check the pinned post first. If you do have a tip, please leave a timestamp so I can find the bit that you're talking about. Also, please bear in mind that this guide is taking me literally hundreds of hours to make, so if you enjoyed the video, the least you could do is give it a like. If you really enjoyed it, perhaps give us a sub! And if you really, really enjoyed it, you can support the channel on our Patreon if you're feeling generous, or perhaps sub to us on our Twitch, that's another good option. Now on to the guide. Alright, so it's finally happened. We've we, done, we've done the Sekiro, we have done the Sekiro guide. Tony has done the Sekiro guide and I have returned. To do the voiceover. Because um, I'm the one who brings you guys. Aye, admittedly. So <laughs> this is just the tutorial area, so we're using this more as an introductory section to the guide overall. Um, so this is a platinum guide. Um, the next parts for the platinum will be a little bit uh, later. Uh, and when you're using this guide, essentially just kind of follow what we're doing. I know we'll be kind of like narrating over it, but essentially it's more like a do what you see us doing and if there's anything needs like specific mention then we'll mention it there like for instance going through that grass there if you want to just avoid being seen entirely because sometimes you can be you just hug the left wall as hard as you can um, but being the into like the like the tutorial area for the game a lot of what you do here doesn't particularly matter um i think that this guide is probably definitely going to be the most complete guide there's I spent so many playthroughs of this, I looked up so many little fucking tips and tricks for each area that um, if you've ever had a problem with Sekiro, you are never gonna have a problem with Sekiro ever again after this guide. Yeah, this has been sold to me by Tony as the like almost ideal way to play through the game. Yeah, it is so... the, the path of absolute least resistance this, if i'm able to do it <laughs> anyone is able to do it if if tony has managed to beat the game this way then yeah so there's an interesting thing coming up here right so here's kuro and uh so i'm just going to cut all the the cutscenes out and stuff but as an example we speak to him and then he gives you the sword for some reason he doesn't give you the sword and the healing gourd in one go you have to speak to him separately to get the healing gourd um but what you do here is you have one heal, but you're also on low HP, right? Not that it particularly matters, because it is just the tutorial area, but if you're absolutely new to the game, come up here and get the pellet, but then, what you do is you kill yourself here immediately. And, uh, <laughs> because what it does is when you respawn, it gives you your full health back again. It just respawns you, like, directly here, which you'll just see in, like, a second. So, as you see, you heal up, right? Um... And you now don't have any healing and you've got half health. So I'm just going to kill myself here. And then when we come back, we'll have full health. And I think that's just a nice little trick. Despite the fact that it, it doesn't matter. But the thing is, is that the guy, like the, this, the, the tutorial area boss, could theoretically give somebody a hard time. So after the loading screen, which that's all I cut out there was a loading screen, you'll appear there with full health and a heal. Right, so yeah, don't drink the healing gourd. Kill yourself so that you respawn with full health and the healing guard. No, no, you respawn with the heal- it's like a death, so you respawn with full oh, health and the healing guard. So energy. even if you drink okay. it, it doesn't matter. Never mind then, okay, yeah. So if you're new to the game, you can kind of use these guys just to sort of like practice on. Um, like you can if you- so some things of the guide is like this is meant to be a full stealth guide as well. However, I also understand that people's patience and time is a factor. So sometimes it'll be like, mostly fully stealth in area and then the last couple of guys you just kind of spam to death and that's still going to be easier than like waiting however many minutes for their patrols to line up so you can like perfectly stealth them there's like a couple of areas like that and i'm like why am i spending so much time here when ultimately it's not actually difficult to kill enemies in this game so 
for the most part, is full stealth because you don't want to get ganged up on. Getting ganged up on will kill even experienced players in this game. But in terms of like, oh, there's only like one or two small enemies left, but you've killed mostly everybody else in stealth. That's kind of what we went for. So as an example, like, there's four enemies here, and if you were just to attack them head on, if you're a new player to the game, they could gang up on you and kill you. But you can go up the wall on that end, kill this guy quickly here, and then you've only got two guys to deal with rather than four all at once. Um, and when I first started playing the game, um, that was an issue for me. So if things have been an issue for me, I've tried to, like, find ways to get around that kind of thing. Now, as much as you don't have a whole lot to say here, um, this guy is interesting because I found that there's something that you can do. You can actually backstab this guy. Um, hmm. Yeah. Oh, I think I might see the path. So, nah, not quite right. So No, as in, like, I think I might see the sequence of events. You're going to break his aggro and then come back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. pretty much. And a lot of guys uh, You do can that. do that to so many... I guess what you would you would call them, I guess, mini-bosses or generals yeah, or something yeah. like that. You can do that to so many of them in this game. Now, if you jump over that branch, it will cut his aggro entirely. Yep. Uh, so you don't even <laughs> need to fight him at all if he somehow is inexplicably an issue. You don't even have the axe yet and you're already... Just cheating the game. <laughs> so if you want to backstab this guy, if he's if he is an issue for you, because he does have two health bars, and if you're totally new to the game, this could be a problem. So you bait him all the way up to the top of the stairs and then run away right up here as fast as you can. Then you need to wait like a little bit. Because um, he takes his time walking back. Well, so he doesn't even walk back from the top of the stairs. Does he it, just get From up the top backing? of the stairs he doesn't walk back. Sometimes he will walk back if you can break his aggro in about this area. Um it's kind of random how some of the NPCs work a little bit, but as you can see, he just kind of like sticks about at the top of the stairs. If you get him to the top of the stairs and you break his aggro fast enough, so then you can just go up and backstab him. And um, at this point, like, he has a health bar left. It's not a problem. Oh, we should mention one of the mechanics in the game if you're not aware of it. Um, when you block enemies' attacks with perfect timing, you of course inflict posture damage to them. It's one of the main mechanics in the game, but enemies' posture quickly resets while they have higher HP. Yeah. So, if you want to take this guy head on, I recommend getting a couple of hits in here and there. Once his health is about 60%, that's when you could maybe start going for blockchains because the posture damage you inflict will stack a lot more severely and then you can finish him off with the repost. For, for sure, for sure. Now, that kind of applies to most of the bosses. Now, he he's also quite hard to demonstrate that on because of just how easy he is. Yeah. Now, you saw what we'd uh, done there as we threw, like, uh, that item there that we just passed that we picked up as we jumped over here to uh, stop his aggro. It's a Fistful of Ash. Now, that, that item is going to be very, very useful throughout this sand. game. Yeah, it's, it literally is pocket sand. Now, what we're seeing here is that you can actually... Like, you can see this side of the bridge here. You can hug the wall and just skip, like, this next bit. But there's kind of, I'm just saying that you can do it. Um, there's really no point because uh, you get, like, a like a healing item over this bit anyway. So uh, just kind of showing that you can do it. Um, so just kill this guy, just wail on him, and that'll kill him. Um, you can also stealth that guy by hanging off the bridge and, like, just shuffling your way along it, and you can stealth kill him while you're hanging off the side. Oh, you so that's... Have, you don't really? have to get up Is on the bridge close? at all. Yep, you can just huh. hang off the side of the bridge like this and you can reach up and stab him in the back. That whole time I didn't know you do that. No, that's that's just something I found out on a random day. <laughs> so something to mention is I think that... So as you can see, like, that wall there, you can, like, hug it and then you can climb along that edge and then go all the way along the edge and round here. Now that's useful later on in the game when you come back here, but ultimately it doesn't mean anything at this stage of the game. So here we are, we're doing Genichiro, which is like the obligatory death boss or whatever. Uh, once you open the door, it just takes you to this part. I had to cut out a bit of the uh, cutscene. But uh, that's something about this guy. There's like no cutscenes or anything. You take the story at your own pace. We're not going to do what we've done with Dark Souls 1 guide or any others. Um, where we kind of added in a bit of the story and it just kind of muddled the whole guide. This is purely like mechanical. So Genichiro would theoretically be good if you could challenge him over and over again to get like good at the game or whatever. But... This is just like my initial, like, me being the amount of runs that I've done at the game. This is how good I managed to do it. And I can almost beat him, but not quite. I'm not quite good enough to do it. Oh, you should have said, I can. Can you? Yeah, I, I do it quite often when I play this game now. But even, even if you beat him, it still doesn't matter. Because... It, it doesn't. But it's, it's a nice little thing to be like, yeah, I beat him. So the next part of this guide is just quickly talking about Dragon Rot. It is, um... I'll, I'll give my critiques of Dragon Rot after the guide about it, but uh, ultimately I'll explain it here because this is just kind of like an empty fight. Uh, essentially, Dragon Rot is like 
a mechanic that affects all the NPCs in the game where when you die enough times essentially they become ill and it stops their it stops their quest lines um, and it, it will infect random NPCs um, like so say you die like five times and on the fifth time it'll, it'll activate the dragon rot um, like cutscene that will take you back to the the temple and essentially at that point it will then infect the more you die the more NPCs will be infected unless you cure it, and when you cure it, it cures all the NPCs. Now the point is, is when an NPC has Dragon Rot, it stops their quest lines. Um, the problem with that is that it doesn't really matter. So, that's pretty much it for this part. Once Kanichiro cuts your arm off, you'll be transported to the temple, and you'll get the prosthetic tool, and that's where we're going to leave it for this part. Now the next part of this guide isn't like a continuation Linearly, we're now going to talk about Dragon Rot. Now, Dragon Rot is essentially a global status effect that can get put on all the NPCs in the game. I would say you just want to get it out of the way immediately, get Dragon Rot as early as possible. And there is a good reason for this, because you get Dragon Rot by dying a certain amount of times. Now, if you randomly die at the middle of some further part in the game, it transports you back to the temple when you die. And that's just really irritating, so let's just you know, like, intentionally do that. That way you're not going to just randomly get teleported back and it's a pain in the ass. So, I couldn't really find a better place to put this part of the guide, except from right now. So, this is going to make a lot more sense come the next part, but once you meet this NPC, you then want to kill yourself over and over again until your game gets inflicted with Dragon Rot, and essentially, once that happens, you'll get the cutscene that transports you back to the temple. Now, you'll see what that looks like in a second. You're not going to fuck that up, don't worry, but... Once Dragon Rot inflicts your game, it inflicts the Sculptor and one other NPC in the game. And if you only know one other NPC, as in this woman here, it can only inflict her. Which means you can essentially just go to her, get the blood sample that you need off her, which will become clear why you need that. And there you can just get it done like immediately. You only need to go to one area, you don't need to go out your way because it inflicted some random ass NPC that you might not even know the name of. It will always be the Sculptor and uh, the Timid Maid. Easy peasy. So now what we need to do is we need to just like essentially just rest. This will just, you know, essentially you need to go through a resting phase in order to progress everything. But then you want to speak to Emma who will vaguely start talking about Dragon Rot, I guess. And then it's essentially just alternating between speaking to Emma and then resting until she asks you to get the blood sample from somebody that isn't the sculptor. And again, like I said, there's only one other person that can be infected by it, which is the Timid Maid. So you just go back to her and get her blood sample. And it pretty much is easy as that. So I think that you speak to Emma uh, again, so once, twice. And then when you rest after the twice, she should be in the temple, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, and then, so now she'll ask for the blood sample from the Timid Maid. And then you just go and bring that back to her. She'll then give you something called a Dragon Blood Droplet, which is like, essentially like a... a human effigy or like an ember that you burn at the idols or you use at the idols and then if you have dragon rot it'll cure the dragon rot on all the npcs in the game now the reason why i think this doesn't really this will probably never be an issue for you the npc quests in the game are pretty shallow so even if they do have dragon like dragon rot it, it doesn't for the most part it's never really gonna matter so I was honestly debating even putting this in the guide, but it really does have to be said because there is some of you that this might theoretically become an issue. As you can see there, we used uh, the dragon blood droplet at the, the, the bonfire, or the idol, and then that cured all the dragon rot in the game. So it means if you went back to the timid mage, you'll then be standing back up and our normal dialogue will be there. And this same pattern will apply to any other NPC that gets dragon rot in the game. Now. The problem being, or rather the not problem, is that this will probably never be an issue for you guys. The amount of playthroughs that I've played at this game at this stage, and any time I've got Dragon Rot, it has never been a negative impact. I've never even noticed it. The, the most I've noticed, honestly, there's an NPC that goes back to the temple who's like a vendor. He was coughing and it was really annoying. So I used the Dragon, uh, the dragon Blood Droplet so he'd stop coughing. And that's literally as relevant as it got for me. But... There is a chance that it'll be relevant for you, and some NPC might randomly just, their quest will halt, and you can't progress it. So, if there's anything that we do in the guide, and you can't get it done because they're coughing or something like that, then just, you know, use a drag blood droplet and you can just continue on your merry way. And that is pretty much 
dragon rot. So hopefully that has been helpful. Like I said, just get out of the way and you're good to go. But anyway, the next part of the guide will be the Ashina Outskirts part one. And hopefully you'll join us for that. Hope you had a fun time in this video. Hope it was informative. And I hope I'll see you in the next one. Catch you guys later.